All right, folks, class is in session. Look, I don't care if it's August. Get your notebooks, get your pencils, because this will take a while. Hello, friends, my name is Sapphire, and in today's video, we are taking a trip down memory lane, if you will. I have been in the Stardew space for a while now, pretty much since I think like 2018 which is crazy, I feel really old. So I think I feel qualified to do a sort of deep dive into Stardew Valley, talking you through all of the lore, all of the little history tidbits, some of the more controversial uh, parts of the history of Stardew Valley, but also the more fun sides, all of the amazing collabs that have come out of this game, all of the folks who have just made it the game we all know it to be today, all of the mods. This will all be addressed in today's video. Now. As for a quick disclaimer, I did like a month of research to try and compile like all that I could into this video. Um, so if I miss one little thing, um, please don't come for me. Thanks. <laughs> I will also have uh, timestamps throughout the entire video. So if you want to like move around to one part or another, go for it. I had this there for you. But without further ado, let's start all the way at the beginning. Chapter one, where everything started. So this is Eric Baroni, the man, the myth, the legend behind Stardew Valley. I feel like most folks know Eric by his, I guess, online username Concerned Ape. And when deciding on his internet alias or username, Eric basically said that he picked Concerned Ape because he is personally concerned by our species role in the environment, basically being a concerned ape. And this is so obvious and apparent if you actually play Stardew Valley, just like the aspects of environmentalism and climate change are, are, are so apparent if you actually play it. So like, I'm not surprised that he picked this username. Concerned Ape, meanwhile, famously developed Stardew Valley by himself alone on this computer and spent four and a half years working on its development. This computer has become a meme in the community, honestly, just people making fun almost of just how simple and rudimentary it, it all is. The fact that like one man on this dinky little computer could make a game that we all hold so near and dear to our hearts. But to me, it's also kind of inspirational that like you can kind of achieve your dreams with like the simplest of technology. This isn't like an iceberg type video, but if we were to frame it like an iceberg, all of this would kind of be like above the surface, like things that most people know, including the fact that Concerned Ape not only made all of the sprites, programmed the game himself, but also did all of the music. Eric programmed Stardew Valley using C Sharp and the Microsoft XNA framework. All of the art, meanwhile, was drawn using Paint.net. And as for all of the game music and sound effects, Concerned Ape used the propeller head software Reason to compose all of it. Now, as for inspiration itself, in the past, Eric has mentioned inspiration for Stardew Valley, which comes from the very beloved Japanese title, Story of Seasons. And while a lot of folks nowadays may call Stardew Valley the blueprint for the farming genre, that just isn't true when you have Harvest Moon, aka Story of Seasons, which obviously came first and which obviously inspired Eric um, and lots of other game makers themselves to make this sort of farming genre sort of, sort of game. As for the reason why Eric decided to start working on Stardew Valley in the first place, Eric was a new graduate from UW Tacoma and found himself not really having a lot of good job prospects out there. Originally, the game was intended as a resume builder of sorts for Eric that was supposed to just take him six months. Those six months turned into four years. Back in the very early, early development of the game, this was actually originally called Sprout Valley, which I, I didn't even know myself actually. Take Stardew Valley, it was called Sprout Valley, which honestly, it, I think it's cute. I think it's very, very cute, honestly. It, it makes sense, but like, this is just so wild to me. I can't even imagine this game being called anything but Stardew Valley. I just feel like Stardew in itself is just so iconic of, of like a word, of a phrase. The very first trailer of Stardew Valley debuted in 2012 and showcased a host of different game mechanics. 
You're moving to the valley. Create a farm from nothing. <laughs> there, there's so much to do. <laughs> but it really is true. This game, even in like its super simple uh, rudimentary form, just showcased so many different things you can actually do in Stardew Valley. From farming to taking care of animals, mining, foraging, talking to villagers. We even get a look at some of like the very early sprites of I think like Haley and, and Maru. It's, it's very, very cool. It's like a time capsule in of itself. But while this trailer released so early ago, a lot of the game mechanics that first premiered actually still remain true to this day. For example, all of the fall crops on this screen, you can actually still harvest all of these. You have pumpkin, corn, bok choy, yams. I think those are either eggplants or red cabbage. Not quite sure. You have the, the, the basics here of what this game would be and people fell in love. This thing took off like no other, you guys. And even in the early days of this trailer coming out and further updates later on, people fell in love with it immediately. It really just became this like cultural moment, if you will. And so eventually people actually voted for the game on Steam's Greenlight program, which would grant an entry into the Steam platform. And from there, the rest is history. I will say four years after that initial trailer, we actually got a more proper look at Stardew Valley with graphics that most of us are familiar with. As of recording this video, this trailer has 4.2 million views. That is crazy. I feel like nowadays so many video games take off, like they, they become TikTok famous or they go viral. And so I feel like it's easier nowadays for games to like gain that traction once like one person talks about it. But like, in the, in the early days of indie video game developers, like, it's kind of unheard of, it's kind of crazy. And so yeah, in 2016, Concerned Ape announced that his game, Stardew Valley, would come to a PC a month later. The game would officially debut in February of 2016, and within two months, sell over 1 million copies. Ugh. That's crazy. That is actually insane to me. It would also be ported to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 later that year, and would later get a port to the Nintendo Switch in 2017. In 2018, meanwhile, Stardew Valley would get an official mobile game launch on the iOS App Store, with the price ranging around $8. As of recording this though, it seems that Stardew Valley on the iOS App Store is now only $5. I'm not sure if that's like a limited time sale or anything, but honestly a pretty good price. I imagine if you have an iPad or an iPad mini, I imagine it would be actually pretty easy to play Stardew Valley in that sense, so honestly, not a bad price at all. So to say it would be a success is an understatement. Also that same year, Stardew Valley was nominated for Best Indie Game at the Game Awards, but lost to the puzzle platform indie game known as uh, Inside by developer Play Dead. Now look, I don't know anything about this game Inside, I'm sure it deserved to win for that reason, like I'm not gonna knock it, but I will say what really irritated, what really perturbed me is that I actually watched back this Game Awards for myself when I was doing research to see like, oh, I'm assuming at some point they, they mentioned Stardew Valley, they might even show some clips. No. Not a single clip was shown of this game. They didn't even announce the indie category. Again, this is no knock to Inside. This is not their fault. But in the same year, Inside also won for Best Art Direction. And so on stage, the Game Awards people just like grouped in all of their awards. They were basically just like, oh, this game won Best Art Direction and also Indie Game of the Year. Congrats to them. And just totally f***ed over not only Stardew Valley, but any of the other people that were in the indie game category. Inside also wins best independent game. Which is just so <laughs> It's like, if you do an award show, list all the nominees. G give them at least like 30 seconds of your time to like showcase what the game is. Um, and so that pissed me off. That I felt was kind of shitty, but 
Anyway, that's fine. We'll move on now. Chapter two, game updates. So as we all know, this game was a Smashbox success from the start, but Eric Brony doesn't just make a game and then go away. No, he makes updates to the game. And in 2018, we got 1.3, our very first big content update. And in this update, we got the Night Market, Winter Notes, new quests, and a bunch of other minor updates. I also want to add here that when these updates came out and updates to follow, um, Eric would compose new music, like for the Night Market, for the Submarine Ride, like new music was composed. And what I think is like, so cool is that if folks bought the original soundtrack of the game when it came out, any like future updates were free. He just made those free. He didn't, he didn't charge extra a couple dollars here and there. He was just like, no, you paid for the soundtrack and I have more soundtrack. So here you go. And this follows, I, I, I assume to this day, obviously. So that, that's really cool too. But perhaps most famously of all, 1.3 also introduced the four player co-op system. All of these updates were introduced in 2018, which is when I started playing the game. And so I, I actually kind of hold like the night market as like a very special event for me personally, because like that was one of the late game winter events that you might encounter. And I just love that theme. That night market theme, you guys, it goes so hard. <laughs> um, and so yeah, those were all introduced in 2018. Just a single year later though, we get 1.4, which gives us the movie theater, 14 Heart Spouse events, Fish Ponds, the Four Corners Farm, and then some other like small minor things. But again, Concerned Ape keeps us fed. That's kind of like what I'm trying to get at. He, he, he keeps our bellies full. Chapter three, the Ginger Island update. So like I said earlier, after the initial release in 2016, we got several content drops, including 1.3 and 1.4, which are both very cool in its own right. But in my humblest humble opinion, everything changed with 1.5. Like previous updates, we got this one a year later, which dropped in December 2020. At a time when many of us were locked up with um, lockdown and needed this. We absolutely needed this. The update for its time was absolutely massive and by far one of the biggest content drops that Concerned Ape gave us. As the aforementioned title of this chapter, this was the Ginger Island update, getting an entire new region to explore. Up until this point, we only really had like one other outside Pelican Town zone, which was Calico Desert, which is a great zone, not knocking the desert, but it's, it's very small. You really only have like the mines and then Sandy and gambling, but that's basically it. With Ginger Island though, it's huge. It's unprecedented that we get this gigantic major island all to ourselves to explore. We get new volcano mines. We get a new farm, basically, the farmhouse, Island West. We get pirates. We get the island resorts there and like 130 wallets to collect. This also included the Mr. Key Walnut Room, which then introduced perfection to the game. And then of course, all of the Mr. Key Walnut Room quests. Like really, really. I'm eating. This is me eating this update up. We also got new characters. We got Leo, we got Professor Snail. Mr. Key, as I said earlier, we got Mr. Key now. Um, And truly for its time, this came at the most perfect time because I honestly like stopped playing Stardew Valley. Honestly, I didn't play a whole lot. Like I played it for a little while in 2018 and then took a hot break for a while. When we got in this new update, I started a whole new playthrough again and this truly reignited my love for Stardew Valley. And I honestly feel like I probably wouldn't have made content for YouTube 
if not for this update because then I got introduced to like the whole Stardew Valley YouTuber scene and I watched like all of the iconic YouTubers like playing Stardew Valley. We had all of the 100 days videos coming out, like really. It was a cultural reset of its time. But while I yap on and on at 1.5, we must also discuss the newest content drop as well. Chapter four, 1.6. All right, y'all, strap in. We have, we have some major, take some notes. Get your, get, get your notes ready, because this will take a while. So this is the most recent content drop for Stardew Valley, proving once again that Eric keeps his fans bed. This update dropped on March 19th of this year, and from the moment it launched, fans were very uh, feral. Immediately. You know, I can't knock them. I don't blame them. I was too. Leading up to this point, we did get like some minor sneak peeks here and there, um, but I don't think anybody truly knew just like how big this update was gonna actually be. And so with this update, we got a new farm type, the Meadowlands Farm, one huge festival in the Calico Desert, which just seriously bumped that region up from like a pretty cool spot to like, whoosh, like this is so sick, ah! We also got pet turtles, loot boxes, an entire raccoon quest sideline, winter sprites of every single NPC, mastery of skills opening up this mastery room, two new fishing derby style mini game events, a ton of late game content, new side quests, new cosmetics, a player farms, and so much more. For comparison, it had been four years since our big content drop, like, which is kind of crazy. Like, like, time goes so fast. But yeah, we had Ginger Island in 2020, and then like four years of, 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 of silence, basically. And so it honestly felt kind of surreal booting up Stardew Valley again and like discovering new things for the first time. It really, it, it really ignited a lot of like new love for the, for the game, honestly. And it's especially validating as a Stardew Valley fan to know that Concerned Ape still cares so much about this game, despite working on new projects, of course. And this update honestly also just felt a little more special to fans since we definitely weren't expecting a huge, huge content drop because of Chapter 5, Haunted Chocolatier. Okay, so roughly two years ago, out of nowhere, Concerned Ape released a trailer for a brand new game. This would of course be the trailer for his brand new game, The Haunted Chocolatier, which like, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure, like, takes place in the same universe as Stardew Valley, but, like, it's not, it's not, like, a sequel or a prequel or, like, related at all to Pelican Town. But yeah, we got an entire trailer out of nowhere for this game. This adorably whimsical game set in a ginormous mansion with ghosts shook the community to its core. The gameplay, though, is fundamentally different with an emphasis on making chocolate and running your own shop. Of course, this could only be, like, assumed from one trailer, but, like, that's kind of what folks are kind of assuming is what's happening here, is, like, a more shop management sort of restaurant style game. But with this just already getting a ton of new characters, we also got, like, the... Sebastian clone, which is like this super brooding character and fans fell in love immediately. I can't, I can't blame him obviously, like as a fellow Sebastian enjoyer. Yeah. <laughs> this trailer dropped out of nowhere and I can remember when I first watched it, I was just like so shocked when it came out. And Interestingly enough, in a blog post in 2018, Concerned Ape talked about development of this new game, so it has been in the works for a while now. Like, I don't think fans realized that Eric had been working on this for so long, but like, as early as 2018 it was referenced, so like, yeah. Since then, though, we haven't gotten too much new news about this game, although a ton of YouTubers attempt to make clickbait videos, um, 
with like speculation and updates, but like that's just all of course speculation. <laughs> the most recent stuff we have gotten for Haunted Chocolates here is a couple of new songs that Concerned Ape released to his channel, one called bboss.ogg, which first of all is a banger. This song goes so hard, but also alludes to the idea of boss fights in the game, which is also kind of cool. But besides that though, we anxiously await more news and we leave the story there. Chapter six, Chucklefish. So while for the most part, this video has been pretty positive, there are a couple of minor negative aspects that have to be touched upon. I just feel like, if we're trying to like paint a complete story of this game, I cannot not mention Chucklefish. So this is Chucklefish. They are a British video game developer and publisher who initially published Stardew Valley actually. Fans would come to learn that this partnership would end in 2022 after allegations surfaced that Chucklefish, uh, used unpaid labor during its development of the game Starbound. Of course, this is all alleged. This is all alleged. <laughs> but while that partnership would end in 2022, this actually goes back much, much earlier in 2019, actually. And in an article by Screen Rant, they said the following. Damon Reese, who is now a lead writer on Route 59 Games, Necrobarista, first posted the alleged unpaid labor on Twitter. Reese said they had contributed hundreds of hours into Starbound development work over almost two years without pay, despite the fact that Chucklefish made, quote, unbelievable amounts of money off their labor, end quote. In the same article, Screen Rant reached out to Chucklefish regarding the allegations, and in response, Chucklefish said that during very early development of Starbound, community collaborators like Reese were under no obligation to work and dedicate their time for free. So that was their response. Of course, fans would be very unhappy with their response and Concerned Ape that same year actually posted to his own blog to sort of address what was going on. The same year, Concerned Ape would announce on his blog that from now on, he would self-publish Stardew Valley. And additionally, in a blog post in 2019, Concerned Ape said he believes in compensating developers for their contributions in working on games. While Eric began to distance himself from the publisher in 2018, the official partnership did not end until 2022, I'm assuming because of like contracts and that kind of stuff. And for those like myself who played Stardew Valley years and years prior when the game was first published under Chucklefish, the logo has been wiped entirely from the title screen, now just a distant memory. Chapter 7, Festival of Seasons. Okay, so now back to some of the more happier, positive stuff. Um, the Festival of Seasons. This was announced in October of 2023 as a new live show featuring an orchestra playing songs from Stardew Valley. And I have seen this becoming more of a trend. A lot of like AAA games or like huge films like Lord of the Rings or like Studio Ghibli are doing this now. And so, for a small indie developer like Eric Baroni to go from this to selling out worldwide shows of his game is truly so incredible and honestly amazing. So yeah, this was basically announced as a worldwide tour featuring just tons of different artists across the globe, all performing the orchestral songs from Stardew Valley. So it was really, really cool and I knew I had to go. And not to brag or anything, but your girl did go to the Philadelphia show and I did get a t-shirt. The back of it has like all of the dates, but it's really pretty. Can you guys even see that? As you can see, they went everywhere. This was worldwide people. But in addition to like merch you could buy, I'm pretty sure at like most, if not all shows, uh, folks also received a little card, um, which is just the music score of one of these songs, the Moonlight Jelly Festival song. 
But yeah, on the back, it has just like all the merch you could have bought. Um, again, this is the shirt I bought. The hoodie also is pretty cute with the little chicken on it. Um, but yeah, this is all I bought because like the merch was kind of expensive, which like, yeah, of course it was. And yeah, this was a super unique experience. Um, they basically formatted this show as if like you're going through every season of Stardew Valley. So like they would start with spring and play all of the spring tracks. I think they also played like the Pelican Town theme. And then summer, we got some Mines hits, some good old fashioned Mines music as well. And so yeah, this was super cool. Except at my show, sitting directly next to me was a person on their phone the entire time. And you know, I will say this, this pissed me off. This person literally watched hockey the entire show, but like that pissed me off, honestly. And it, not that it like ruined my enjoyment of the show, but like, I was just trying to like zone in and like lock into the music and all I could see was fucking hockey bro watching his stupid ass hockey game the entire time and I'm like, okay, etiquette just like out the window. I will also say there was a bit of a ticket issue. I, I saw a lot of folks experiencing ticket issues trying to buy tickets for this. Myself included, I struggled very hard to buy tickets for this show. I think I ended up like trying it on like three different devices to try and buy tickets, but the site just kept crashing, which is as expected for like a thing of this magnitude. And I know that a lot of folks were really upset because a lot of resellers got tickets while fans didn't. And so in response, Concerned Ape did add more uh, tour dates, which is super cool um, to try and like combat the whole reseller thing. But again, not a CA issue. This is like a Ticketmaster price gouging reseller issue. Personally, like I said earlier, I did experience issues getting tickets. There was like an option to just like, you could either like try and hand pick your own seat or just like pick like next available seat. And I ended up picking that instead because I was just like, so scared of it selling out, I didn't want to risk it. And so we got like the third upper balcony, which wasn't even that bad. It kind of was cool to like be up super high, looking at like all the folks out there. So it worked out in the end for us. Chapter eight, the fish video. When I first asked folks for their like iconic moments in Stardew Valley history, which was the original concept of this video was like the most iconic parts of Stardew Valley. I saw time and time again, the Argon Matrix fish video. And with that, I cannot argue. If you have not seen this video, first of all, you have to, it is just so good. But in a nutshell, this creator, Argon Matrix, caught every single fish in Stardew Valley in one single day which I did not think was achievable. Like I did not think you could actually do this, but he did, he did it. And it's just, it was a joy to watch this video. Like the, the trials, the tribulations, the outcomes, the actual strategy involved for doing this is just so impressive. And so for that, this is, if not like one of the most iconic videos of all time in the Stardew Valley space. And I have to just like give it a shout out. With the new update for 1.6 though, there is one huge change to the meta where you can actually buy um, fish bait for specific fish. And I think Argon Matrix is working on like a new 1.6 version of this currently, um, cause that does change things quite a bit. And so I am once again, really curious to see how he does things um, and how this challenge just kind of gets ramped up from there. Chapter nine, the Stardew Valley Awards. So this is an award show created by creators for creators. The Stardew Valley Awards are organized by the Stardew Valley Collaborative and hosted by Joe TG and a 20-something loser. And this award show just encompasses basically everything about Stardew Valley. You know, top streamers, top speedrunners, best mods, just like everything and anything at all about Stardew Valley. 
Also, uh, yours truly was nominated for some awards, so like that was pretty cool. But overall, this is just a super fun award show with immaculate show vibes, and you can just tell so much love went into this. And yeah, I cannot wait to see where things go from here. Chapter 10, Stardew Expanded. So alongside the very famous Stardew Valley Ridgeside mod, Stardew Expanded is probably one of, if not the most famous mod to come out of the community. This mod first launched in April 2019 by modder Flash Shifter and added a lot of new content. And you guys, I mean like a lot of new content. We got a ton of new NPC characters like Sophia, Andy, Victor, Olivia, Claire, Martin, and my favorite, Lance. We also got a ton of new uh, post-game content, including a ton of more magic-related stuff with the wizard, and new areas to explore like the Crimson Badlands, the Junimo Woods, the Highlands, Castle Village, and so much more. All I can really say is if you are able to mod your game and you're looking for sort of a new challenge, if you will, try Expand It. It is just so incredible and there is just so much that went into this mod, which is still being updated to this day for the record. Be sure to follow Flash Shifter on Twitter, X, whatever, um, as they are still updating this mod as of recent as June with new content. So. Safe to say it is not over yet, and I'm excited to see what they add next. Chapter 11, Merchandise. So this is the merchandise section, and I wanna just share with you guys some of the incredibly cool licensed merch from Stardew Valley. The two big ones are Sanchi, who does a lot of plushies and that kind of stuff, and Fan Gamer, who does plushies, but also like t-shirts and keychains and all sorts of really cool merchandise. Most recently, Sanchi has dropped a ton of really cute Junimo plushies of all different colors. Meanwhile, Fan Gamer has done keychains, pins, shirts, plushies, special books, and that kind of stuff. I actually have official merchandise from both Sanshi and Fangamer. Plushies, of course, because I love plushies so much. Um, but this is the Junimo plushie. I decided to just get in the traditional green color. But great quality, honestly. This guy is so cute. I've always wanted a Junimo plushie. And so this is the guy that I got. Here's the official tag. I do have the tag on him. I just, I don't know, I didn't take it off. And then I also have a star drop and this is from Fan Gamer. I actually bought this from a local game store in my town, but um, it has a really cute little tag here of another Junimo. So freaking cute. But yeah, again, just super high quality production. Like it, it's so, I don't know, durable. Is that the right word here? <laughs> It's just nice. It's just a nice plushie. And so yeah, this is all of the official merch that I have. I don't have a whole lot of merch, honestly. I kind of want to get more. I want to like get a, like a t-shirt or like a sweatshirt maybe, but I just haven't. This is, this is all the stuff that I have. Besides that though, there are also a couple of other merchandise things that I want to talk about quickly. Number one, the Stardew Valley vinyls for the soundtrack are so beautiful and I don't own a record player, but if I did, I would so buy these vinyls. They are just so beautiful. All the different colors are so beautiful and I just love them a lot and they're really, really cool. And then number two is the Nintendo Switch Collector Box Edition for Stardew Valley. This is such a cool piece of Stardew Valley merchandise, also available through Fan Gamer, but you get the game, of course, but also a really beautiful, I think it's like wood, a wood standee of Stardew Valley. You also get this super cool Collector Edition comic, a little cleaning cloth, and a deed of land for Stardew Valley. That is so freaking cool. Are you joking me? Are you kidding me right now? I already owned Stardew Valley for the Switch. I bought a digital copy of it. I think I got that before this little collector edition came out. If I had known though, I would have waited because this is so cool. Like I freaking eat this up, you know? And last but not least in the merchandise section is our latest product of the Stardew Valley cookbook. So yeah, this cookbook came out on May 14th and features, I think over like 50, yeah, 50 recipes translated from Stardew Valley 
in its game format into real life. So yes, you too can make a strange bun. <laughs> I don't own this cookbook yet and I'm not sure if I ever will. I'm not really like a chef baking sort of person, honestly, but it looks really cute and all of the art features also just super adorable. So like, thumbs up there, gold star. Chapter 12, The Community. I want to just talk here a little bit about some of the collabs that have come from Stardew Valley, especially since the multiplayer inclusion uh, of Stardew Valley. There are just so many people who have done really cool collabs, either like community wide events or like people on the same farm doing something really cool together. And so, yeah, there are two very notable ones um, being the Perfection and Friendship Athons. These are both also hosted by the Stardew Valley Collaborative and feature just like so many different streamers and content creators coming together to achieve like one big goal. And so in July of 2023, 30 streamers baton passed a single Stardew Valley save file with the goal of maxing friendship out with every single NPC in the game. This is a really cool concept, so I just love the idea of streamers each using the same save file, but they have the goal of trying to friend one person in specific. We're gonna be marrying, we're not gonna be marrying, sorry, we're gonna be friending George. Um, I'm pretty sure Lee and Jess did this to us on purpose because they thought it'd be cute. So we did ham it up a little bit. My husband is kind of cosplaying George. And in a similar vein, the perfection of Thawne was a very similar concept where 20 streamers actually came together on the same file to achieve perfection. And that, it, it's just so cool to me. I love that concept, honestly, a whole lot. It's just, it's very collaborative, but also like people can kind of go at their own pace and contribute in their own special ways. It's very, very cool. I also just love the idea of a shared farm in this way. It kind of reminds me of the game Telephone where you bounce one idea off to the next person, but things kind of get twisted along the way, resulting in this super chaotic string of randomness, honestly. <laughs> And just by looking at the farmhouse toward the end of this marathon, it's quite clear just how chaotic things actually got. Besides the two uh, Perfection and friendship Athon marathons, I also want to talk a little bit about some other collabs that have come out of Stardew Valley. Number one was the Stardew Valley tournament, which was actually sponsored by Concerned Ape himself, which took place in 2021 and featured a ton of popular streamers. Number two is Twitch Rivals Stardew Valley Edition. And number three is a personal favorite of mine that I want to just talk about quickly is the iconic Pox Seal and Sharky collaboration videos. This collab was sort of like the board game Risk where you have different like archipelagos and each person has to try and like take over the island and like get resources and there's different goals to check off like whoever makes the most money, whoever chops the most wood, stuff like that, would all go into this kind of competition and just very, very fun. Super cool mod, first of all, and just like really cool idea. Um, And yeah, great video overall. Chapter 13, speed running. So we obviously couldn't talk about Stardew Valley without talking about all of the amazing speedrunners. So like most, if not all video games, there are a couple, if not a lot of amazing speedrunners and Stardew Valley is no exception. And the community has come a very long way to not only develop really impressive strategies for its runs, but also invent entirely new categories. If we're looking at an iceberg of speedrunning in Stardew Valley, the term animation canceling would be at the very top of the iceberg. Training. Does this mean I get to make a Krabby Patty now? No, you can't make a Krabby Patty without understanding the phrase. In the simplest of terms, animation canceling is a sort of exploit in the game where instead of finishing the entire action, you cancel the animation and therefore shaving off time doing these mundane tasks. For example, in chopping a tree, the swinging of the axe motion can take like a couple of seconds, but if you cancel the animation, it can take like milliseconds off your time. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, honestly, because it is just like seconds, but in in speedrunning, like seconds matter. Like the millisecond down 
matters so much. And so if runners can achieve animation canceling for like for all of their watering their crops, harvesting, chopping wood, it, it saves so much time. And so it is actually recognized as part of the community as a very viable way of doing your runs. There are two big categories. There is vanilla and glitchless. And in vanilla Stardew Valley speedrunning, you actually cannot use this tactic. It's all, you cannot use it at all. But in glitchless, it is allowed. And so there are different folks who do different kind of runs, whether it being vanilla or glitchless or seated even. There are different ways, of course, to achieve all different kinds of runs. And on a whole, the community accepts all different kinds. To add on to this, in the vanilla category, it's mostly intended for console players because console players cannot animation cancel. However, of course, anybody who wants to do a vanilla run can, of course, this, is, this isn't just for console players, but like it, of course, just gives more opportunity for more folks to speed run and just makes it more of a community wide thing for PC, for console, for all players. When looking at the main categories in speedrunning for Stardew Valley, there are a couple as follows. Marriage speedruns, Jojo Warehouse, and or Community Center Completion, both Mines 50 and Mines Completion speedruns, and then of course doing specific bundle rooms, for instance, doing the entire boiler room or doing the entire bulletin board. Those are also runs. I have tried to dabble in the speedrunning scene for a little bit, and I have actually tried a Mines 50 run before, and it went okay. I got over just 20 minutes, which I think isn't like too terrible, but like for comparison, the current glitchless world record holder of Mines 50 is just over 10 minutes. That's crazy. This record is held by Tinster101, and they hit this three years ago and have not been beaten since. So very impressive. But in addition to the traditional runs, there are also a couple of meme category speed runs. This includes the Hat Mouse run, which is buying a hat from Hat Mouse as quickly as possible. The Hat Urchin run, getting a hat and putting it on a sea urchin. Mayo Percent, which is drinking mayonnaise and Posh Percent, a speedrun to eat both a wine and cheese without traveling cart lady. And of course, if we're gonna do an entire section on the speedrunning scene, we cannot, of course, not talk about the faces behind that community. And so in this section, we're just gonna kind of like rapid fire off some names and briefly talk about why they're notable. I obviously cannot mention like everyone, nor do I know everyone in the community. So if you know a runner who you think deserves recognition, um, leave a comment below. I might do a part two or like a deep dive into like speed running alone, perhaps could be kind of a cool video concept. But yeah, here are just a couple of the notable runners out there currently in the community. Piano Addict did an unthinkable move in the Sea Urchin percent run by actually finding a living hat in that run. What the f- when talking about the story behind the Sea Urchin Percent run, we also must mention who did it first, Chikorita. Chikorita managed to find the living hat first, blowing the entire category out of the water, and for a while, making it the unbeatable speedrun. That is until Piano Addict. Previously, most folks would either just get the straw hat available from the Egg Festival or begin like a hat mouse from where you buy the first hat from Hat Mouse and then do the Sea Urchin. Um, but Piano Addict, did the unthinkable here and actually found a living hat. This is incredibly rare. This is this might be the most insane moment I've ever experienced watching speedrunners in Stardew Valley. For those unaware, the living hat is an incredibly, incredibly rare hat you can get by scything up uh, fiber on your farm. For a bit of context, this hat has the very slim chance of 0.001% of appearing. It's crazy. I have never actually found this hat in any save file, although I dream. A girl can dream. <laughs> but for a Piano Addict to actually find this hat and then pivot completely and get the record is just so incredibly cool. So you're probably thinking, if Piano Addict did this run and it's just so incredible and impossible to do, then how do runners actually beat this record? Well, Ethan M0112 actually did the impossible as well. 
over the course of nearly 4,000 attempts, Ethan actually found the living hat as well and did this run successfully. I then rushed inside to buy a fish tank and finished the run with a time of 2 minutes and 39 seconds. So long story short, if you want to also do this run, just get lucky. <laughs> I also want to call attention to the Habu himself, who managed to get perfection in 24 hours. An incredible feat. Stardew Valley's Blade also is an incredible speedrunner, who focuses mainly on predicting RNG in his runs. Like I said earlier, there is an entire seeded section of Stardew Valley, so runners who have actually determined seeds in specific files can do runs themselves. This is kind of like Minecraft seeded runs. It's very similar in that fashion. But perhaps one of Blade's most famous examples is marrying Haley before the first flower dance. Yeah, you heard me right. <laughs> On the marriage side of runs, meanwhile, my friend Ava actually holds two world records for marriage for both Haley and Sam, and two individuals, Mel 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 1997 and Monic Mermaid, both played a pretty important role in marriage runs very, very early on in the community by developing guides and routes essentially to achieve these speed runs. Routing in these games is very, very important because, like I said earlier, of course, time is the biggest element in doing speed runs, and so you want to have your guide your route down to like the millisecond and so those two individuals also played a very important role in marriage runs by developing super cool guides that folks still use to this very day lastly underscore 76 aka andy does a very unconventional way of runs by programming his computer to play for him this is just super notable and worthy in terms of computer programming itself just being able to have your computer do insane things like finishing the entire community center in one hour it's like so so cool and insane so if you want to see the game being broken in this way by an ai computer um check them out too. Again, that is just a couple of the thousands of people from across the world who speedrun Stardew Valley and just do so many incredible things for the community. Um, so again, leave me a comment down below if you want to see me talk more in depth about speedrunning history. The last thing I'll say on this topic is there is an official Discord server for the community of speedrunners. So if you do want to like check that out, um, I'm sure you can find lots of other people who are developing cool runs and doing new tactics and that kind of stuff and we'll answer your questions. But with that, I think that's a good place to end our deep dive for today. Again, I want to thank you all for watching today. I really appreciate all of your support and I hope you enjoyed today's very informational video. I definitely want to explore more deep dives into Stardew Valley or other popular games, so if you want to see a game below, leave a comment. I also kind of want to do like a deep dive into like Stardew Valley lore, like the in-game lore of Stardew Valley. So I perhaps might do that in the future. So stay tuned. With that though, my name is Sapphire. I am signing off for now and I will see you all in the next video. Bye friends.